Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. I'm Brink and you're listening to The Voice of Insanity, bringing you an opinion about a game. Today we're going to be talking about Kaiju Panic. It was released by Mechabits on the 9th of October and it's kind of a hybrid action strategy game. It's a mix of tower defense, harvesting for your economy, and a 2D adventure game. We're going to go ahead and dive into some gameplay and detailed analysis, but if all you're interested in is the summary and my opinion on the game and whether or not you should buy it, hit the link in the top right corner, the big bright box up there, and it'll take you directly to that portion of the video. For the rest of you though, we are going to dive directly into a mission. This game is adorable. The monsters are totally cute, the art style is simplistically beautiful, and it's just very pleasing to the eye. That's the first thing I've got to say about it when I dive into this. I know, I know guys aren't supposed to ooh and ah over things, but I had to keep myself from going aww, especially when I hit some of like the dinosaur type creatures. It's really pretty cool. In this game, you're a military commander free to roam the map. You can build anything inside your range circle and you collect resources by walking over them. You can build a variety of towers like acid, cannons, or lasers, even satellites in orbit later on in the game. And as you're playing, you have to save as many civilians as possible, both by protecting the buildings and by collecting civilians from across the map. Sometimes this takes a little bit more effort because they do panic when they get close to monsters, which means they're going to scatter everywhere. And sometimes they have conflicting pets. If you have a dog in your group, you can't collect someone with a cat and vice versa. So you have to put your civilian somewhere while you go get a different pair. And speaking of putting them somewhere, uh, more civilians lets you boost tower stats if you insert them into towers. Or you can build things quicker by standing next to them. All the civilians run into the construction area and complete the process much faster. The units that you're going to be fighting, the kaiju monsters, follow preset paths unless they encounter obstacles such as your own barricades that you can put up or buildings. After that, it seems like they're kind of randomized. And you have to harvest crystal from impact shards to build towers to kill those units. Uh, you have to match the tower types to unit types in order to land kill shots. There's a little bit of projectile simulation, not much, just some pretty basic stuff. Um, there's some faster units that have dodging patterns where your projectiles will miss, and the solution for that is rapid fire cannons, where the projectiles fire much faster and impact more reliably. You've also got the acid for cleaning up armored units, and the quad cannon for most things generally. It's the basic one that you're going to be building a lot of. The armor mechanic... There's no armor that falls away from units. There's no graphical implementation of damage whatsoever. Basically, you just watch the numbers falling off the units. Your cannons can't damage an armored unit until the acid eats it away. So you have to kind of have two layers running as you're building your turrets. Uh, you can also collect samples from fallen monsters for a little bit of crystal and some research points to upgrade your turrets from the lab in between levels. Now. On the surface, everything with this game looks pretty good. It's an interesting implementation of tower defense, something a little bit different that you don't see every day. However, there are some fairly frustrating problems with this game that are not readily apparent. I'm gonna do my best to explain them clearly in this video. Some of them you almost have to play the game to see, but I'm just gonna hope that you trust me on this one and see what I'm talking about and you don't buy this game for yourself without a clear picture of what's going on. First of all, this game is very clearly a port. If you go into the options menu, there is literally nothing but volume options. There are no key rebindings. There are no video options. You are stuck with borderless windowed mode. You can't change the resolution, do any of that stuff, which most people are not going to have a problem with, but like I said, it's very obviously a port. All of the towers are keyed to certain uh, bindings on your keyboard, but you can't change them. So if you want any kind of customization, well, you are out of luck. Additionally, with the transfer to mouse control as opposed to gamepad control, um, there are some sticky situations that you can get yourself into. There's some interesting mechanics that they tried to introduce, like right-clicking towers to replicate them or some different selection scenarios so you're not stuck with you know, select this tower, build this tower, select a different tower, build that tower. But it isn't clean. You're gonna run into some situations where you have a, 
power type stuck under your pointer and you can't get rid of it. There was even once or twice I got stuck in a menu and it just doesn't feel very smooth on occasion. It's 95% there, but that last 5% is a doozy. Also, the dialogue in game can be a problem because it is skippable. You can rapid click through it. At the beginning of the game, it doesn't matter because the monster flow does not start until after you finish the dialogue. But in the middle of the missions, if there is a dialogue point, you cannot build towers while the dialogue is up and the monsters keep walking while the dialogue is playing through. So you're stuck until the dialogue is over and you can't do anything. And that really, really annoyed the crap out of me at a couple different points in this game because I needed to get something done and I couldn't. Again, the whole interface is not completely smooth. It's almost there, but it just isn't. <laughs> There's also a little bit of a problem with pacing. This game has resource gathering which means that you're going to have to run back and forth between the crystal mine and the front where you're building your towers. Usually that's not a problem, but there is a finite amount of resources. So if you're heavily dependent on one nearby crystal mine and that one runs dry, that means that you're gonna have to run all the way across to the other side of the city to pick up any resources to come back to build turrets. To me, it feels like an artificial increase of difficulty that's really just burning my time. I can see where the developer was trying to go with it, I can see why they included that mechanic, but it just doesn't seem necessary to me, and it's not something that I enjoy playing with. It did get incredibly frustrating at a few points. And then while we're talking about things that were frustrating, there is a major problem with randomness on the unit passings. Now. Typically on tower defense games, it's a memorization game. You memorize which waves come in from which direction and what unit composition it was so that the next time you play it, you can build the proper turrets to deny whatever was coming your way. And usually it takes two or three tries on a hard level to beat it. This one, I was nine tries into the boss level and I gave up. This one that you're watching in the background was the ninth try. And it appears to be totally random because I would build the same four turrets with the same timing in the same place and one mission, it would kill off the first two waves, no problem, um, had no issues. And then the next game, the first half of the first wave would kill all four turrets and then just ravage my base. A couple of times I lost my HQ in the first round. And that kind of randomness just doesn't belong in a tower defense game like this. If you're gonna make a game that's dependent on memory, then you don't put randomness into it. By the same token, the paths that unit follows are kind of broken because you'll have, uh, specifically on this map, the south and the east side, the units basically follow the roadway. So you can estimate the position of the units easily with the roadway. But on the left side, the units come in, a, I don't know, about 20 feet north of the roadway. So if you build your turrets where you would think they would come in, then it just doesn't work. And they destroy all of your turrets because they're in the wrong place. And then on the north side, they're streaming in over in the tree line, nowhere near the roadway in seemingly a random location. And you can't really work with memorization to place your turrets because the ranges are so small. So that kind of thing, it's just beating your head against the wall because you try over and over and over again and you can't get the, the turrets in the right spot to anticipate the path of the unit. And it also is a huge problem because you can't um, reclaim your turrets to build new ones. The amount of crystal that you get back is very small compared to the investment. You're going to kill off like three turrets to build one more. So if you misplace your turrets, since you have a finite amount of resources, you have basically just committed suicide. So that is also kind of a broken mechanic. As one last thing that is ridiculously hard to get along with, um, the audio is very bad. The music is not my cup of tea. A lot of times music is personal preference and you know, you can't really insert yourself into that. But in this one, the music was repetitive. Even if you like it right off the bat, 
the amount of times that this audio is going to loop will drive you to the brink of insanity. Also, the game noise, if you are building a turret and you assist it with your civilians, there are circular saw noises that are literally screeching, piercing your eardrum. And that happens every 30 seconds through the entire game. And I don't know why they put such an incredibly annoying sound effect as one of the most common sounds in this game, but they did. I really was, a, I just had to shut the audio off partway through this game and I just could not deal with it anymore. So let's go ahead and wrap up this game. I don't want to repeat anything too much. So we're just going to dive straight into the summary. Basically, this game tries out some kind of different things for tower defense. I like the direction that they tried to head. The implementation just was not very good. The frustrating mechanics of the game, the slightly rough implementation of the control interface, and the annoying quality of the audio of this game kind of join up into a trio of doom as far as my opinion of this game is concerned. Add one more thing onto that pile because this game costs $14.99, 15 freaking dollars on sale. It's regularly 20. This is in no way, shape or form a $20 game. Uh, I don't know why on earth they were asking that much for it and I would never pay that much. If it was two to three dollars, maybe, maybe I could justify picking this up, but no, not at that price point. Alrighty guys, that is my opinion of this game and I am sticking to it. If you guys disagree, if you've already played it, or if you have any questions, comments, or snide remarks, go ahead and hit up the comment section. I would love to chat with you guys. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.